Today's epic female entrepreneur is Nanconde Kasonde Vandenbroek, coming to us from Afri Zambia, Africa. Nanconde is a successful entrepreneur, an organizational change architect, and professional certified coach with over 20 years of experience in working with multinationals, international organizations, and governments. Raised in Zambia, Switzerland, and France, Nanconde's professional career had her traveling and working around the world in development and finance with the United Nations and the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, TB, and Malaria, where she honed her expertise at designing and leading large-scale change across multiple business and cultural sectors. Her entrepreneurial journey began with her handbag company, Conde, a new brand of luxury high-end clutch designs created in Zambia and made in Italy. With a passion for human capital development and change management in Africa, Nanconde became the founder and CEO of Zanga, a company specializing in the design and development of human capital solutions for success in Africa, fostering solutions to transform, sustain, and impact advancement efforts in Africa. Her national and international team embodies a powerful partnership that represents over 50 years of combined experience in leadership development, entrepreneurship, and industrial psychology in both the private and public sectors. Welcome, Nanconde Kasonde Vandenbroek. Thank you, Jane. It's a pleasure to be with you today and to meet your audience. Thank you so much for being here. I have, uh, uh, your, your journey has been so incredible from your handbag co company as an entrepreneur and then moving into the area of, of leadership coaching and, and development for not only private sector, but also the public. So I know that you do a lot of work for the governments as well. And just explain to our audience a little bit about your journey and how you reached your level of success given the gender and the cultural gaps. Thank you. So um, I can make sense of where I am now in hindsight. And when I started out over 20 years ago, I was really just trying to find my path and find what I enjoyed doing professionally. And through the opportunity of working with the United Nations, I was able to not only work on my personal development, but gain professional skills that took me from how to organize and manage myself better, how to work with other people, and then how to lead teams. And I don't underestimate the power of that experience working in an, in an organization and appreciating how the systems, the processes, and just the people and the structure actually uh, was the foundation for doing what I do now. And so through that experience of working for the organization, I was then able to take the, the knowledge and some of even the network. And when I stepped into entrepreneurship, I had a good foundation. And I think the good part of the foundation was being able to understand how do I look at structuring the strategy for my business? What do I want to achieve? What's the objective? How do I break it down and understand the different um, goals that my business is going to support and who my customer is and pulling together documents for the business. But what I didn't know is how to actually manage a business. So my initial leadership was within an organization, but now my leadership is in business and my own business. Yes, I could see that completely. It, it is a, a quite a step from being an entrepreneur, um, but like you said, getting that foundation and, and learning it within a corporation that's already established. So that's, ter that's tremendous insight. And I know too, just to go, um, a little backwards, you actually uh, create, we'll go into this further in a, in a little bit later in the questions, but I know that you created something that was very in, 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 in energy synchronicity with your culture, because you didn't see that there was a, a, a need, there was a need for something like that, and that what didn't exist. But I'm just going to walk right through into the, the philosophy of branding right now, because your company, your very first company, the hand bag company was named uh, Conde 
And that has yes. a very powerful brand philosophy. Tell us a little bit about that and why you feel that uh, brand philosophy is important in company. I think the brand philosophy of Conde really reflects who I am as a woman and uh, my heritage. And um, I've been able to use that in a powerful way um, to, to be authentic. And the idea behind Conde is really about co-creating and in every um, stage of our lives and in every situation we, we are in, in particular when we have to make transitions and change, we have an opportunity to put out there who we are and we have a choice on how, in how we do that. And so the Conde really means how do you co-create with your environment and how do you create an atmosphere that is authentic to you but in doing it, you're also saying something to the world and everybody who crosses your path. And so there's an intention, there's an action, and there's a result. And so for me, the whole purpose of the design of the Condé bags is that they fit into your world. They fit into your lifestyle. And they're a statement of what you feel and what you want to say. There's an energy around the philosophy. And it's about co-creating with whether it's your life, whether it's your space, whether it's a relationship. I really think that that energy around the Conde philosophy can fit into anybody's world. Absolutely. That is so profound. Oh my gosh. I, I love that philosophy and it, it does, it applies to any business, especially when you're beginning a business. Uh, that was so insightful. Thank you so much. Uh, so now moving into Zanga, which was uh, the other company that you now run, give us an idea of what the inspiration was to create Zanga because you went from design and luxury handbags to a more service-oriented coaching platform. So just give us a little insight into what inspired you to, uh, to move into that realm. I think the best way to share this is to also share how this transition happened. So when mm. I was working for the UN, I had a great career and I was really enjoying what I was doing and had the opportunity to travel the world, as you said, and support development programs in different cultures and sectors. Uh, and when I met my husband, um, we both met within the UN system and had great careers. One of the challenges was how do you manage two careers that are progressing and start a family? And my values are uh, about really being ambitious, about working hard, but they're also about family. And so I had a conflict when we had our first child because I wasn't able to travel as much and I also had to change the way I looked at myself. And that transition was quite tricky because I then chose to follow my husband's career and I left mm -hmm. my UN career and followed his postings and his positions. And wherever we would go, I was I tried to find work and consultancies in development and it was a challenge. So at that point, I realized that, you know, even as women, we go through transitions in our lives and we have to reaffirm our values. And so at that point, giving up my UN, I would, I would call it giving up my UN career, choosing to put my UN career aside to focus on the family meant that I also knew that I couldn't stay at home. I needed to do something. And from all my travels, I had collected a lot of African fabric and was inspired from, you know, growing up in Switzerland and, and being immersed around luxury. And I wanted to bring together and create this world that I felt uh, was missing. This world of the combination of the African heritage with, you know, leather craftsmanship and materials and an expression of who I am as a Afropolitan. I'm African by heritage, but I'm also exposed and traveled. And I, I love my culture, but I also love my latte. And so that world coming together um, is an expression through the bags. And so that's how the bag started as a transition from my professional job. But at the same time, my background is management and that's what mm. helped me excel and enter leadership positions in the UN. So it was a natural progression to go into um, coaching and developing other people's management skills. And I was doing these things parallel. And interesting enough, 
the management consulting business that I then established started to actually generate quite a bit of revenue once I understood my niche and my niche is supporting middle managers to move into senior positions. And that generated the capital to actually take Conde from a hobby to a, a full-fledged business that is actually produced and has a supply chain and has a team working on it. Oh my gosh, that's fabulous. So the one helped build the other. And like you said, you had it, you had started it, but then left it, gone back to school. And then your background in management was the fuel, not only for the growth of your company, but for the revenue that fueled your passion in fashion, so to speak. Yes, that's and nothing one... was lost. Yes, that's a wonderful story. Oh my gosh, absolutely beautiful. And I know that the name means something as well, Zanga. Um, it's yes. a given name of uh, the, uh, maybe you could just tell, touch a little bit on that because I was really mm -hmm. inspired by that. Thank you. So the birth of Zanga and the name itself comes from my mother's birthplace, which is uh, the northern province of, of Zambia. And it's from the Mambwe tribe. And Nazanga means I have found something that I've been searching for, or it's like a light bulb moment. Um, mm. And so Zanga was created because through the experience of developing leaders and supporting their management skills um, in, in my work, I realized that there was a disconnect in the tools I was using and how my clients actually experienced sustainable change. And I noticed, just like a painter, you know, the painter puts the frame around the part of the picture that the painter wants you to focus on. But outside, there's still the painting, but not what the eye is being drawn to. And I realized that the tools I was using were capturing and were based on Western norms and reference points. But we were in an African setting. And what I was seeing and hearing outside the picture was the culture the social economic environment that was actually impacting how people make choices, how people make decisions and how people actually show up at work. And so Zanga was born as a light bulb moment to say, where are the tools that actually capture our cultural diversity in a, in a way that we can use it to increase our own self-awareness and create an accurate baseline for growth. That's how Zanga was born. Mm, beautiful, so powerful. Oh my gosh, I could see why it is so very successful because you've got that vision and it's so strong and you can tell it's so authentic. Um, I love that. Now, moving on in the same realm of developing such a successful company in, in both the Conde and Zanga, you have, I read online that you have company values and I would love for you to share what those are, but more so why they're important for entrepreneurs to express their values when they're putting together a company. Values are your guiding light. They are the things that actually uh, mean something to you and are important in your world. And whether you're conscious of them or not, they're always at play in your relationships, in what you do, in your choices, what you like, what you don't like. And so from a company perspective, it was very important for me to understand what my own values meant. I'd been used to working in other organizations that had values and I could understand them uh, from a cognitive perspective. So my head got them, but my heart, my heart didn't always get them. Now in my own company, my head and my heart are aligned in my values. And mm. some of my values, I have six key values, and these are the, at the heart of who I am. Um, and so Ubuntu is the first value. Ubuntu is really an African way of being. It is really innate in our culture and heritage, but also in what we represent. And it means I am because you are. We coexist and you are because I am. And that means then whatever I do, I'm conscious that it has an impact on the people around me and others. And so as I'm doing uh, uh, my business and thinking about what I'm putting out in the world, I'm also conscious that my pathway is going to intersect somebody else's and the value that I bring to them also brings value to me. So Ubuntu is a powerful um, philosophy. Then my next value is purpose. And I truly believe, especially in business, that we, we are created 
to um, respond to a need in the world for our generation. And that doesn't necessarily mean only from a spiritual perspective. It also means that what you're doing is actually responding to something that the world wants or, 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 or needs. And there's a frequency that only you can provide because of your background, your experience. And that background and experience can be good but it can also be from the scars of your journey. What has made you resilient in what you have learned? There's a purpose to our lives and we express that. And as a businesswoman, I'm very clear about the purpose I express through my experience, my qualities and what I love doing and what I'm good at doing. And then professionalism is about try your best. There's one thing I've learned in business and maybe it's a bit of a reflection of my personality type that you won't be perfect, everything won't be in place, but do your best. And that's what professionalism is. Do your best and bring your best to whatever you're doing. You'll get feedback about what somebody else feels about it. But if you know I did my best, I was able to put forward my best foot to serve my customers, to also serve my own growth in what I'm doing, then it is well. The fourth is passion and being passionate. Love and enjoy what you're doing. It's very hard to wake up every day to go somewhere that you don't love to be. And so you've got to be passionate about what you're doing and what you're putting out. The fifth is life learner. I'm constantly learning and co-creating my success. The success I had five years ago is not the success I have now. And the success, success I have now is not the success I'm gonna have in five years. And so I'm constantly learning and building. And finally, integrity. No matter who's watching, no matter what's happening, I need to put my head on my pillow at night and sleep peacefully. <laughs> that is fabulous. Oh my gosh. Nankonde, I am so inspired. Um, and and I I could I could feel my my I was tingling because the values I could see that it's your head and your heart. And a lot of times I will ask individuals, especially entrepreneurs, let's discover and let's unravel what your values are. And a lot of times there, I don't understand what you mean by my values. So the fact that you have consciously put those in your, the development of your companies and that there's something that you live by and you keep coming back because if something is out of synchronicity or if it's not an alignment, it's most likely because you're not in a line with your values. Um, so it's it's really it's really valuable to have them listed so that you can reflect when you don't feel something that's aligning with your heart, uh, because often we yes. we we you know we skip that we are we're always in our heads, especially in business. But so insightful and you act it, it was so succinct and authentic the way you delivered that. So I'm hoping everybody got that message that it is important to list your values and then when something's out of alignment check your values and nine times out of 10, it's going to be because you're not in alignment with the, your values. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So impactful. Thank you so much for, for um, sharing that and setting your company apart. Now you touched a little bit on this, but you know, a lot of entrepreneurs um, struggle with the concept that, oh, I'm just like everyone else. And they're in coaching programs where they're saying, find your niche, find your niche. What I like to say is discover the gap. What is what is the gap that people are missing? And you recognized a gap in the marketplace for your services, which was brilliant. Um, uh, and you you use that to launch the uniqueness of your company. Maybe just unpack that a little bit and tell us how you came to realize that there was that gap in in the in the industry and how that is important to just sit back and maybe take a look at what your industry is and where the gap might be. Um, I would put it this way. There's a lot of, um, there are other coaches, there are other um, consultants doing leadership development in Africa um, and they're doing great work and working with tools. Um, but all of us see the world through our lens, our own lens. And the what we pick up is different. We may be working in the same area, but what we pick up is different. And so, you know, even for Conde, the bags, bags are not new, but mm -hmm. how I've packaged them, put them together and the meaning around them is different. And that's what sets it apart. And so for Zanga, it was really about 
uh, understanding that um, what I'm doing is not a, a new area, leadership development, but what I'm seeing as an opportunity is coming through from what I'm learning with my clients about how can I help them? How can I support them better? And I think that's where setting yourself apart comes, uh, starts to sort of land. What is it that I can do to improve? What is it that I feel improvement looks like? And what are the others doing? So for, I did a competitor uh, analysis and I even positioned myself on a matrix uh, against both for the bags and for Zanga with my competitors. And I identified their strengths and I identified their weaknesses. And I found the middle. There's an intersection where we overlap in what we're doing, but there's also the periphery where there are different things that I bring to the table. And so I amplified those different areas that were missing in the intersection. And for me, from a Zanga perspective, it's the cultural impact and influence on, on behavior in the workplace. From the handbags, it is adding to the uh, offerings of African luxury brands. Um, and so, for me, identifying those unique um, points of differentiation helped me then to purpose and package what I believe is my mission and my brand. That is absolutely on point. I, I, that What you said about your competitive analysis and you put it in a matrix, I would l love, I don't know if you have a program that, that that delves into that, but that is so, um, that opens up doors. Like you said, you saw what was good, what was bad, what was missing. And that gives you insight into how you can develop and move forward, no matter what industry you're in. I have yes. not heard that yet. And I have to tell you, Nankonda, I, that is like a gem. That's to me, that's a gem. I love it. So competitive analysis, do your homework. Um, and, yes. and, you know, not just look at the good, but look at what's maybe missing and where you fit in the middle. That's so insightful. I love it. Thank you. Keys to success. What makes a woman successful in business? Um, I think uh, women are multipliers. So wherever oh, we that. go, we um, never leave it the same. Where I think women see and read anything at so many levels and layers, and that's maybe the nurturing side. So whether it's in the home, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's in your own business, you are not just looking at the brand. You're you're not just looking at the um, products. You're not just looking at your staff. You're not just looking at your clients. You're looking at how the um, the world is receiving you. There's so many layers that we naturally bring to anything we do. And I think that's what makes women successful because because of those multiple layers, you're then able to act and make decisions across different areas of yourself and your business that can multiply your impact. I love it. Women are multipliers. That's a light bulb moment right there. <laughs> it's so true. With that in mind, the role of the female entrepreneur. How do you view the role of the female entrepreneur in our future? I, um, there's two sides to this. I think there is my sort of um, optimistic aspiration of what the future holds for female entrepreneurs. And that's a time when my daughter will, will be able to run a business and be successful and then be noticed that she's a woman. Mm. So success will drive the future. And then um, that success will be analyzed. And one of the factors will be the female aspect, what the female aspect contributed to the success. But success is success. And so for me, that vision and aspiration for the world my daughter's going to grow up in, my daughter's 10, um, yeah. keeps me thinking about the future of female entrepreneurship is not actually female, it's success. It's success. Then the, the other side for me about the future of this is then what are we, uh, because of what we do now, because of the different role models that we're putting out there, we are creating a new blueprint. 
we are, and I would like to use the language of, you know, you're rewriting the source code of what a female entrepreneur is. And in Zambia, for example, when I first started the bags, there are not many women in who have had that role model uh, down their street making luxury handbags. There are also, even on the African continent, not that many role models who have developed their own psychometric assessment um, and have brought in um, such insights that I'm bringing to the table. And there, even now, you know, I'm seeing female pilots, um, seeing female um, aeronautics, um, going into aerospace and engineering. These um, different faces of the opportunities for women for me are the seeds that are planting that aspirational future I have for my daughter because we are showing them that yes, it is possible. And it's a no brainer. You shouldn't have to think about it. That why should you be uh, going into what was previously a male dominated field? The language will shift because of what we're doing today to say, this is a field. It's not male dominated, right. it's just a field. So I can enter it. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and I love that you said it's the success that connects with the entrepreneur. It's not the gender. It's not mm -hmm. female entrepreneur. It's successful entrepreneur. And that's the lead in, yeah. not, not the, I love that. So the rewards of entrepreneurship, what's the most rewarding part about being an entrepreneur for you? Managing my time. <laughs> Um, and uh, doing what I love. I have found that point where um, my skills, my talents, my passion have met and I get paid for it. Mm. Perfect. That is, so I'm going to ask you, would you encourage your daughter to go into entrepreneurship? I would encourage her, but I would also prepare her. Hmm. Absolutely. Yes, because it's not always an easy road. In fact, most of the times it's not. <laughs> yes. It's not. But she's it's got a great role problem. model. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, you were going to say it's a lot of something, a lot of it's a, hard work. It's a lot of work. And it's, um, you. I think when you move from an organizational setting to starting to working for yourself, you realize that there is nobody to escalate the problem to. <laughs> you have to solve it. Lonely at the top. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's so true. It's like, well, we'll have to talk to the boss about it. Well, I'm talking to the boss right now. <laughs> yes. yeah. Me, myself, and I. That's, that's so funny because I have a friend who talks to herself and she says, we're having a conversation right now, me, myself, and I. <laughs> so yes, you're never alone. It's You've got lots of company. It's just a matter of asking which one has the answer. So that's that's yes. wonderful. And of course, uh, you ha she has a wonderful role model. Now, do you have any last words of advice that you would like to share with our audience? Because you have so many insights and so much knowledge and experience. I would say dream strategically dream but mm. be strategic and practical about it i think it's important because the journey of entrepreneurship is a marathon it's not a sprint and i think once you get that round your head you realize that everything that you do is a step forward where either well if it's a problem or if it's a success everything is just a step towards the goal, which then means before you get into thing, anything, be clear about where do you see yourself in 10 years? Because mm -hmm. for both of my businesses, I have an exit strategy. I intend to scale and, and hopefully um, pass them on to somebody else who will take them to a new level that my competencies may not even be able to take them, but I know the vision should continue. And so anchor yourself. Where do you see yourself in the next 10 years? And what does that picture look like? What are you doing? And how did you get there? Then work backwards. And that's what I mean about dream strategically. Because when you work backwards, you realize that did what you did today help you step towards that vision or away from it? And so with some tools and the right mindset, I think anything is possible. In, t in managing a business, it is about how you organize and manage your time, but it's also about how you manage your energy. So focus mm. on your energy because your energy is going to keep you going. 
Absolutely. And your energy is affected by your thoughts, which is your mindset. So it's all encompassing. So I love that. Manage your energy because you're right. Your energy and your time. We always say here, especially in North America, time. Everyone says it's it's a time challenge or, uh, you know, do time blocking. But I Mm -hmm. love to change it to say, do your energy blocking. That completely changes the narrative in your mind too, because yes. uh, you know we get there's stress and there's anxiousness and then there's calm and there's you know due diligence and it's just working through it. I love that energy management. We'll have to start a new program all about energy <laughs> management. <laughs> so I have one last question, which is because we're here on the Epic Vision Zone, I ask every individual. If your life were an epic story, what would the title be? It's in your head, both the victory and the battle. It's in your head. Mm, I love that. It's in your head. Which means then you can deconstruct your way out of the battle, but you can also capture the steps that you took to the victory. Mm, That is so inspiring. Beautiful. Well, Nankondi, I am so grateful for having you be here on the female, well, the entrepreneur revolution then, the success entrepreneur revolution, as we'll call it now. Um, And be sure everyone to go and check Nankondi's bio page at the, in the summit directory. All of the links there are are going to be available for you to connect with Nan Kondi, and I would love for you to start a discussion and any other questions that you might have. And be sure to follow me on Instagram at Jane Applegath and check out how we can help you become an epic entrepreneur at janeapplegath.com and make your dreams come true. This is the Epic Vision Zone, transforming your dream into epic success. And thank you once again, Nan Conde, for your time and your inspiration. Congratulations for signing up for the Female Entrepreneur Revolution. We're bringing you some of the most exciting female entrepreneurs from around the globe to share with you their knowledge, their ideas, their inspiration, and more importantly, their resources to elevate you to prosperity and freedom. And by being here, you're on the cusp of something great, your epic future. I'm Jane Applegath, founder of the Epic Vision Zone and producer of the Female Entrepreneur Revolution. Be sure to get your VIP pass and join me after the summit on June 16th for a very special VIP coaching session where we'll have hot seating, summit Q&A, and a special guest appearance by one of our speakers just for you, where we'll ignite your vision, up-level your confidence, and set you on the path to your dream's epic success. This is your opportunity calling. It's time to take action. Get your VIP pass now. I can't wait to see you on the other side.